Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Josephine Watson, and I'm the Commercial Projects Editor at iGaming Business. We are delighted to be hosting a webinar uh, today ahead of ICE, and that's going to be sponsored by iOvation, in which we're going to be discussing how to beat bonus abusers at their own game. Bonuses are, of course, crucial for attracting and retaining players. However, these incentives can also attract fraud and abuse. This has been on the rise for quite some time, and according to iOvation research, there was a 287% increase in bonus abuse from 2015 to 2018. And in 2019, it was once again the most common type of fraud reported by iOvation gambling customers. Our speaker for today on this topic will be Scott Olson, who is Vice President of Product Marketing at iOvation. With that, I'm going to hand over to Scott to start the presentation. Over to you, Scott. Thanks very much, Josie. I appreciate it. Very happy to be on this webinar today talking about bonus abuse. It's, it's absolutely the top question that we get from gaming providers, and we really work hard to help them uh, make bonus a valuable contributor to their business while preventing the fraudsters that try to take advantage of that. So in this presentation, we're going to be talking about some key trends that, that we see in the iGaming industry related to that. So, you know, first, we're going to talk a little bit about the environment of the iGaming industry, especially uh, looking at the shift to mobile devices, which even though for all online businesses, uh, mobile is a primary computing device in gaming, it's even more so. There's increased competition in gaming. Of course, there's mergers and acquisitions and new markets opening up worldwide that impact the strategies that gaming providers have. Um, and one of those key strategies is how do you grow effectively? And bonuses continue to be you know, a primary tactic for attracting new players. It's the primary target for fraudsters as well, because if they can create many new accounts, take advantage of those bonuses, cash out, then of course, they do not have the lifetime value of a customer. The gaming providers uh, lose significant amounts of money and they restrict the use of bonuses that can attract the good VIP types of customers. It uh, has many negative effects, not only the fraud losses, but the inability to use such an effective marketing tool uh, across their player base. We worked with our providers to balance that player experience with fraud catch. Of course, with fraud, it's always that balancing act. Fraudsters continue to adapt and evolve, and the technology that we provide evolves right along with it. So I'm going to give you a perspective starting out with um, our experience and where some of these numbers are derived from in the iGaming industry. Um, we have processed uh, almost well, over half a billion uh, transactions in the iGaming industry over the past year and stopped almost 50 million transactions uh, that we've identified as risky. Um, in the gaming industry, 72% of the transactions that we uh, interact with are from mobile devices. And so that's either through uh, the gaming provider's mobile app or it could be through the mobile web. But uh, mobile is absolutely the number one computing platform. And so you have to have that at the top of mind in your strategies. And our gaming providers, one of the things that we do is we allow our gaming providers to work together to fight this kinds of fraud. And, and so our providers have submitted in the past year over, over a million reports of fraud that are available to all of our gaming customers um, that number over 100 active gaming operators, platform providers that use iOvation solutions. And so this is a quick look at just the, the growth pattern of bonus abuse. And in fact, in the past year from 2018 to 2019, uh, bonus abuse rose 72%. And as Josie mentioned at the outset of this webinar, uh, it rose 287% over the last three years. So this is, this is the problem that people are fighting and it, it affects uh, everything through the player journey, both with acquiring new players, but also even promotions that they may serve to existing players as well. So what we look to do with our providers is, and our operators is to streamline that player onboarding process, really to make that um, as seamless and painless as possible because you want to reward good players. Um, the last thing you want to do is have too many fraud controls up front where you get an abandonment of the account creation because you're putting them through uh, too rigorous of an identity verification process and a fraud prevention process um, when they're good VIP players. So 
as a part of this strategy, it's just as important to accurately recognize the characteristics of good players um, as it is to uh, recognize fraudsters. And so that's one of the things I'm going to be talking about is how uh, we combine expert rules-based platforms to really have uh, the reputation and evidence platform for devices that we've seen before that are associated with fraud, but also combining that with um, machine learning and artificial intelligence to pattern and profile good consumers, even if you've never had an interaction with them, so that you can recognize them, reward them, and streamline their onboarding. And what does this do? Of course, it builds brand loyalty. Um, the faster and, and better experience you have with somebody onboarding, um, then they're going to be more loyal. You're going to have a longer account retention with that player. Um, you're going to grow your revenue, of course. The bigger the initial deposits, the higher the revenue. Um, and you're going to grow your market share relative to your peers. So as I mentioned, we take a, a layered approach, and it's really built on device intelligence, human intelligence, and machine learning. And uh, just this is just a sampling of some of the types of things that you can work with. But uh, it starts with the player device, and you really want to have the insight around the devices that players use because that's one of your primary methods of detecting bonus abusers. Um, they're using the same device when you can recognize those devices when they're coming back and creating new accounts with different personal information, um, then you can see and identify that device, uh, identify uh, suspicious velocity problems, as well as have geolocation and other device anomaly mismatches uh, that would be indicative of a fraudster if they're trying to masquerade um, their device, if they're using emulators, if they're trying to hide their location or use a anonymizing proxy like Tor. Um, all of those are types of things that we can derive from the device itself and give you a good clue into the risk of a you know, fraudster. Um, and then we combine that with the history of abuse. And so um, we as we mentioned, we, we received over a million submissions of fraud reports from our gaming clients over the past year. And, and that provides you with the window into not only the abuse that you've reported yourself, but the abuse from peers so that you can work together to fight this fraud. Um, so you can provide blacklisting of devices. Um, we can get insights from the IP addresses that they're using. The bottom line is that the fraudsters are working together to defraud businesses, they, whether it's in fraud rings or, or sharing information. And we really believe that businesses need to work together, too, so gaming operators um, can share that history when they've had a problem uh, with a particular fraudster or fraud rings. And then we have uh, machine learning solutions. And so if you think about our, our expert systems that are rules-based, it's really focusing on uh, stopping those type of uh, fraud that you've seen before that you know is bad. And, and machine learning is about identifying um, evolving patterns as well as um, predicting what may go bad in the, in the future. But what's so great about this in the context of bonus abuse is it also predicts consumers that are highly likely to be good. Um, and so that speeds the onboarding of those players when you're, when you're trying to create a new account. And so with that, really looking at this through the player journey, because when we're speaking to bonus abuse, of course, new account creation is the primary uh, vector for that kind of fraud, is that that's when bonuses are most commonly presented. But there are bonuses and other problems that the players uh, experience throughout the journey. And this is a solution that can really work with you throughout all the points of risk. Uh, in those player interactions. So it begins with new account creations, and this is where we have our device intelligence, uh, both the expert system and machine learning to, to focus on, are they using a stolen identity? Maybe you need to manage self-exclusion and regulatory uh, concerns, and then focusing in on bonus abuse here that can be triggered by um, device risk or device velocity for sure. Um, are some of the key points that we provide at that new account creation point. But then we also look at throughout the player journey, and I won't go into too much depth on each one of these, but the device can provide a very meaningful uh, additional vector to prevent account takeover um, when they're logging in. And so you can pair 
good consumers' devices with their accounts um, so that you recognize them when they're coming back. And if you're if you're seeing somebody come from a brand new device on that account, um, then you may want to provide some additional authentication. Um, and we talk about friction right uh, in terms of a uh, authentication and protection on accounts is because when they are exposing risk, you do want to have some controls that can prevent account takeover and prevent uh, loss of customer account uh, assets. Um, of course, other points of risk in addition to login where you're really fighting account takeover um, are when they're making deposits. You've got payments frauds. You've got money laundering issues that you have to deal with. All of those type of things are different points of risk where we can help mitigate the, uh, mitigate the problem. Um, changing account details is actually one of the major points of risk uh, within an existing player account. If they're trying to change their phone number, if they're trying to change their email, um, those are two very common uh, tactics, one of the very first things that fraudsters do uh, so that the original account owner does not get alerts. Um, those are things we can help you combat and, and provide additional checks. Um, of course, when they're placing bets, we can look for collusion and cheating um, where that's appropriate, syndicate betting, um, and then when they cash out and if they have withdrawal fraud. So for all of those things, whether they're online or offline, we have solutions where we can combine device intelligence, we can combine device-based authentication where we're pairing and looking at the devices your good consumers use. And then we have strong multi-factor authentication as well that can just be built directly into your mobile app um, that can be used at login when needed for stronger authentication. Um, it can also be used at these higher points of risk, especially when they're cashing out. Um, you can provide that additional step up and stronger authentication to protect that player account. And we've had great success. This is from the head of payments at one of our gaming operators. Um, cer certainly, oops, sorry. Um, we had uh, excellent uh, response with them in terms of the data that we provide. For some reason, this going over automatically. <laughs> but um, they, they use this in conjunction with their fraud detection tools. Uh, and in order to stop returning uh, fraudsters, and they combine this with their others in the defense and depth technique. Now for bonus abuse protection, um, when we work with our clients, we, we're working with the two sides of the coin here, is um, bonus abuse impacts both your good players and your fraudsters. So we want to um, provide you with the means to accurately identify and reward good players. And if you do that well, what that means is that you can increase the types of bonuses um, that you provide to them because if you're decreasing the, the volume of abuse that comes with that and, and the risk profile that you have on those types of bonus uh, targets. So you can identify those new players accurately. You can reward those good players um, and uh, streamline their uh, onboarding process. And on the flip side of that coin is to get fraudsters out of the process as early as possible. So if they have a history of abuse, if they have unusual device velocity, they've created 10 accounts today that they're trying to, to use to take advantage of those bonuses. Um, those are things that we can easily uncover and really provide a glaring line between uh, known good and known bad players. Uh, this is another quote from uh, the director of casino operations at WagerWorks. Um, we work all the time with fraud rings, and fraud rings are very sophisticated. They target these bonuses. Um, this is their perspectives. Tens of thousands of pounds paid for itself on the first day. Um, just another great uh, example of a happy customer um, that we've worked with, uh, and specifically around bonus abuse. Um, uh, that's the very first thing that we tackle with new clients. Um, and the reason that we tackle that is because there is a, you know, crystal clear ROI when you're fighting bonus abuse. Um, first of all, is it improves your promotions. Uh, it reduces the constraints. These are the types of feedback that we get from our uh, gaming operators, is that uh, it reduces the constraints that they offer. 
Um, many times they're artificially uh, limiting the bonuses that they would like, that marketing uh, might like to offer because their fear of fraud losses so they can uh, open those up. And what that results in is a more competitive environment. Um, of course, you're competing with uh, your peers in terms of the types of bonuses that they can offer. So to the extent that you can offer bonuses that you're not afraid of uh, those fraud losses, then you can increase the initial deposits from new players, and that goes directly to your bottom line. Um, and then, of course, you're, you're not only reducing, uh, um, improving your promotions and increasing the deposit matching, uh, but you're reducing your overall losses. And that's so when you're looking at this, you're increasing your revenue, you're reducing your fraud losses. Um, and those are the uh, the elements that customers look to to prove. And, and this is the thing where when our clients uh, implement us within that first quarter, they see immediate impact. Um, and this is a very rapid ROI type of solution for fighting bonus abuse. And so for new player bonus abuse, um, primarily, as I mentioned, we, we start with account registration. Um, but for uh, some existing accounts, this is where account takeover can become a problem and account management and cash out can become a problem as well. So um, if somebody has had new accounts um, and uh, they're using credential stuffing to identify um, that a player has opened a new account and they're trying to cash out on that bonus, then we can also prevent account takeover uh, for those new accounts that may have just received a bonus. So the way we think about uh, consumer devices online is that this is a way to recognize anonymous consumers. Um, especially in a privacy sensitive environment, um, we can provide and track reputation based on the devices that consumers use. Um, and this associates the devices, not only an individual device, but the many devices that they use with that consumer. So what we have is technology that builds a graph uh, that connects uh, player accounts with devices. Um, and this is something that is available uh, across subscribers so that we get a more comprehensive view of which devices are related to each other. Um, for most consumers, they have two to three devices minimum, but there are many that have, uh, you know, five, 10 devices over time, especially as they uh, replace um, phones. And that's the most common replacement, uh, maybe a year or less that people are upgrading their phones, but that reputation stays with that consumer. So even if they had had a fraud on a previous phone or um, they had good history on previous devices, um, we can track that over time. And we maintain that history longer than any other provider um, in the space. So uh, that's something that we feel is a, is a key differentiator of our solution is that ability to build a consumer graph and track reputations over time. So from that uh, consumer interaction uh, and what does the approval look like, I'm gonna give you a little bit more detail on the type of questions that we help our customers answer. So this could be any interaction point on your website or through your mobile app. So on the website, um, you would simply integrate the iOvation solution with a JavaScript uh, um, plugin. And then on the mobile app, you have an SDK that you build directly into your mobile app. Um, and when the player is accessing your site or accessing your app, um, we gather hundreds of device attributes and we create a device fingerprint so we can recognize that device and match it in our database. Um, so the first thing we see is, is this a new device? You know, have we seen it before? And what do we know about it? Um, is the device being evasive? So even, even with first time devices, we look at things on the device. I mentioned before, we look for anonymizing proxies. So these are known proxies, or it could be very popular proxies like Tor. Now in the gaming industry, they may be doing that in completely legitimate uh, means, but you know your own business the best, and you can start to profile that uh, if it's uh, correlated with fraud that you see, and it's a risk indicator. Um, are there geolocation risks? Um, this is both from a perspective of risky high risk geolocations. Um, this can also be a regulatory issue if you have to prevent players from certain geographies. 
Um, we provide geolocation insights into the player, um, provided through the IP address or provided through the phone when, the, when the, it's permission based. Um, are there device risks present? Um, this can take a look to see uh, if there's anything inherently risky about that device itself. So uh, not only is it um, uh, evading detection, but are there things that we know are indicative of fraud uh, related to the type of device? Um, screen resolution is a good example of a type of device characteristic uh, that can be built into some of our machine learning solutions. Um, and then, of course, does the device have a history of fraud? We search our database, we see if we've seen it before, and if anybody has reported histories of bonus abuse, of account takeover, of any kind of payment fraud, um, those are very common types of frauds that we're looking for, and we can make that evident, whether it's uh, your, the provider uh, that you reported your own fraud or whether it's a peer. Um, and then we finally, we look to see if it's associated with other devices that have a history of fraud. So even if somebody has only committed fraud from their PC, but it's associated with their uh, mobile device um, and there has been no fraud on the mobile device, we'll know that those two devices are related to that same anonymous consumer. And so we can make that available to you. You'll know that there's risk there because that person uh, has been uh, indicated as somebody that has committed fraud in the past. And at the end of that, we provide you with a platform to create a transaction recommendation based on the aggregation of all that risk and whether you want to allow that uh, transaction, whether you want to deny it uh, outright or whether you want to queue it for your team uh, for further review. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the configurable rules that we have and how that works together with machine learning. Um, everything that, you know, one of the ways that I like to think about the expert systems with the rules-based platform and machine learning is the rules-based platform allows you to set up and, and uh, identify things that you know are bad, and machine learning lets you uh, predict and infer uh, what's going to be bad or what's going to be good. Um, so in this case, the rules are, are really good for identifying risky behaviors and of the device, attributes from the device, enforcing company policies um, that may be around geolocation, um, adapting to changing business needs that uh, so you may want to set up custom rules as a particular emerging fraud comes along uh, to queue that for your team for reviews um, and quickly stop emerging fraud patterns for machine learning, um, this is really good for, it's a predictive solution. And so it's about, is this likely to be good and likely to be bad? And in the context of bonus abuse, that likely to be good is just as critical as the likely to be bad because it can help you uh, promote with confidence and offer bonuses with confidence. Um, simple setup and maintenance, it works hand in hand uh, with the exact same API that we deliver uh, the rules-based solution, um, it adapts automatically, so it's continually uh, trained. It's a um, supervised model, so it's trained on the evidence that you submit uh, to us. So it's adapting automatically based on the outcomes that you see with your customers, good and bad. Um, so when you submit uh, bonus abuse evidence, you submit uh, account takeover evidence, then, of course, the machine learning platform is trained on that, looking at the characteristics of those devices uh, that were used. This is especially uh, helpful at, at catching new and evolving fraud that you haven't seen before, as well as fraud rings. Um, and identifying subtle risk patterns as well, so that you may not create specific rules for, but that there's risk uh, inherent to things that are um, not evident and obvious in a rules-based system. So kind of the yin and yang of fraud controls. And this is just a visual look, and we do have visualization of the, of the graphs that we create um, in our platform. Uh, but in this case, this is just showing um, representative examples of what those graphs might look like. And so the blue circles are computers, um, the black, the, the circular dots are accounts. Um, and in this case on the left, you would see what would look to be a normal uh, player. 
So they may have three devices, they've got several accounts that are associated across different sites, but that's a, a normal looking uh, account. You may have a single fraudster that's targeting your business for bonus abuse. That's what the middle one looks like, that's abnormal. So that's one computer that has created many accounts. Um, and so once you flag that once with a bad account, you can obviously stop future accounts coming from that device. Um, and then fraud rings can be, you know, extraordinarily intricate. This is a, a real fraud ring that we help detect um, where they're sharing device accounts. I'm sorry, they're sharing player accounts uh, across this fraud ring. Um, and so we can build associations and understand the relationships that exist between many different devices used uh, in a fraud ring. So uh, we'll talk next a little bit about uh, iGaming players um, and how we can optimize that player experience. Uh, you know, so once the account is created, once they have their uh, legitimate account, um, of course, if they have created that with a new bonus, then you want to prevent them from being identified and having their account taken over. That's where device-based authentication can come in um, and it provides many benefits. It can prevent uh, bonus abuse where uh, it's the theft of the bonus, um, but it can also expedite the login if you know that they're returning from a, a good device that's been paired to that account. Um, you can reduce the amount of friction that they have when they're coming in to play. Um, of course, you can help the, uh, recognize that device to manage self-exclusion, make sure that they don't come out, come back to an account uh, if they have indicated that they need to be uh, excluded. Um, and then that's all oriented around uh, preventing account takeover as well. Um, the device-based reputation adds location insight. It can have a, a risk check that you add when the user is coming from a new device um, or a risky device potentially. So um, if they fail authentication, this is another point where people do a risk check for existing accounts. Um, and then of course, if their status change, if they've been indicated by um, one of your other, uh, if they hold another account at your site or with a peer and they've been reported for fraud, abuse, or cheating, um, then that, of course, becomes uh, evident when they log back in, even if it was through a different account. And then finally, uh, we provide strong multi-factor authentication. And this is really an in-depth topic for another time. But if you're interested in protecting player accounts, we have push authentication that can come straight from your player app. So it can be built into your mobile app. Um, it's far more secure than SMS one-time passwords. Uh, it can be used to augment one-time passwords or to be your primary factor for authenticating consumers. Um, this can be used both online and offline. So it can be used when they're calling into the contact center if they're managing their account. Um, it can also be used to authorize large bets or unusual bets uh, so to prevent chargebacks and players claiming you know the Monday morning chargeback uh, that says that they did not make the actual bet so you can have a strong authentication and authorization record uh, of that bet you know so from another gaming company this is about allowing easier access to existing accounts and a seamless experience uh, when they're authenticating and fast-tracking of good consumers uh, when they're getting access to their accounts. And then, you know, one of the things that I've mentioned is fighting fraud together. Um, we have, you know, well over 100 gaming clients. Um, these gaming clients find that, you know, eight out of 10 of them name our evidence sharing as central to their fraud prevention strategy, especially in an industry that has so many types of specialized risks, um, especially around bonus abuse and other types of player fraud. So with that, um, really looking at growing revenue, rewarding your good players, streamlining your player onboarding for a much better experience and reducing abandonment in that account creation process building brand loyalty, and growing your market share. All of those are things we work with our clients uh, to do when they're fighting bonus abuse and, and preventing fraud. And so this is uh, you know, a, a nice introduction to the way that we uh, fight bonus abuse. But of course, um, if this is something of interest to you, 
we would love to hear more from you. And so we have a number of things upcoming that you can take advantage of to interact with us. Um, we have an iGaming report that's going to be av available on January 30th. Um, you can pre-register now to see what uh, drove iGaming in 2019. This is a look back at all of the trends that we see from our gaming clients um, and get access to expert insights in preventing gaming fraud um, and building player trust in 2020. Um, we are going to have another webinar specifically focused on that iGaming report, and that's going to be February 19th. Um, this is going to discuss those takeaways from that report. So you'll be able to get the report, review it, and then we'll have a webinar to discuss those uh, trends, uh, as well as provide you with the mechanism and the vehicle to ask questions that you may have about the results we saw. Um, and if you would like to interact with us face to face, and you're going to be at ICE London uh, 2020, we'll be there. We're going to be exhibiting again. Um, we're going to be at stand N9-500. Uh, we'll be at ICE London, and you can um, schedule a live demo um, or come and visit us at our booth uh, and ask further questions that you might have. So with that, I'm going to turn this back to Josie uh, to see if we might have any questions that I could answer. Excellent. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, fantastic presentation. So to begin with, uh, I think an interesting point that I've discussed uh, with iVation before, with various different people there, is the fact that you guys uh, feel quite strongly about the importance of information sharing between operators in the iGaming industry when it comes to fraud and bonus abuse. Can you perhaps talk a little bit on this? Yeah, you know, um, this is where uh, we're, we're part of TransUnion now, and one of their key uh, mantras is information for good, and that's the way we see this, is um, operators need to work together, and they're in this together, and when you're fighting a common enemy um, that is targeting your type of business, and is it absolutely in your best interest to work with your peers to fight this fraud? Um, the fraudsters are more organized than ever. In fact, we had a very interesting uh, webinar last year with uh, with a former reformed fraudster, and he was talking about the collusion and information sharing uh, that they have between fraudsters. They're sharing identity information, they're sharing payment information, they're sharing techniques for hacking, um, and absolutely we felt from the very beginning of Iovation in 2004 that um, using information together to fight fraud uh, is is in the best interest, not only of uh, people in one given industry, but across all of our customer base, uh, because we work with financial providers, credit card providers, retailers, where we see fraud and there's crossover uh, between that type of fraud in addition to the fraud we see from gaming operators. So uh, it's, it's one of the unique elements of uh, our solution that our operators take full advantage of. Excellent. And a sort of a fairly top level question here before we go into some of the more um, fine, finite details that people have been asking for. Uh, how do you feel the industry is addressing bonus abuse sort of across the global scale? Would you say they're handling it well or do you think that in general there's a lot more work that could be done? Yeah, I think that they're handling it. <laughs> It's top of mind, so nobody is ignoring it. I'll put it that way. Um, it is the number one vector for fraud. It is the biggest concern of the gambling operators that we work with. Um, but fraudsters, it is their number one target as well. And so they're by no stretch uh, of the imagination or do the gambling operators that we speak with consider that they have this problem solved. It's a top priority. They're putting a lot of controls in place where we are typically one of uh, many different solutions. We work very nicely with other types of fraud controls, identity verification that they may have um, to prevent this kind of fraud. So I would say that it's, it's certainly not catching anybody by surprise, uh, but there's still work to be done to get it to an acceptable rate. And I guess where I would say is that some of the shift is occurring is it's as much about identifying those good consumers. And so I think from a mentality perspective, uh, this is something that a lot of the operators we talk to 
are keen to operate on uh, and focus on more is that I mentioned that machine learning solutions can help you profile uh, good customers very effectively. This is something that is uh, really attractive to our operators to be able to offer better bonuses uh, without risk of uh, abuse of that so that they can, you know, target them quicker, bring them on board quicker and, and offer more aggressive bonuses. Brilliant. And uh, this this might be something that sort of applies more to the next webinar. So feel free to hold off until then if, if that's the case. But we've had a couple of questions about uh, are there any particular markets, any particular verticals or regulatory infrastructures that are more vulnerable to the problem of bonus abuse? Or is it fairly unilateral across the world? Uh, from a regional perspective, I don't know that there's anybody that is more um, more vulnerable than others. Um, of course, it's interesting that they say ver different verticals because when you think bonus abuse, that's typically something related to gaming. But we are working with retailers for promotion abuse because, of course, there's many different deals and discounts and benefits and, and um, rewards uh, that... Uh, it may be travel rewards, it may be uh, commercial retail rewards uh, that are also dealing with issues of a more generalized promotion abuse. Um, even banks um, have incentives for people to open new accounts with them um, and they may have financial incentives as well. So it's, it's something that is, you know, the number one issue in the gaming industry, but promotion abuse is something that we're seeing across other industries. Um, and it's tied to gaining good new customers. This is a this is a problem that's becoming more and more uh, top of mind for customers. Is how do we attract uh, new great customers? Um, and promotions and bonuses are typically a part of that discussion. Brilliant. And um. Another thing that's sort of of interest, and it's come up in a couple of different ways uh, through some of the questions we've had here. Uh, obviously, not only are um, fraudsters getting more sophisticated in themselves, but also the tools they can use and indeed abuse are becoming more sophisticated. You know, you've got completely anonymized browsers, you've got email services that are very reticent to sort of give credential information and, and sort of, you know, keeping people private and those are often well-intended products but they perhaps enable fraud more. How is Ivation moving to address this or how do you think this is going to impact bonus abuse? Is it a case that it will just be the same uh, solution or will there need to be more um, sort of focus put on these types of services? Yeah, well, we've always felt that you need a defense in depth strategy and that you use different technologies to uh, you know, detect different types of techniques from the fraudsters. So um, obviously a foundation of our solution is device recognition and, and understanding and finding devices that we've seen before and identifying velocities. But we also, this is where I was speaking to uh, adding machine learning as well as evasion detection to our solutions. So we look to see uh, what are the characteristics of the devices that are visiting us that may be trying to hide themselves, whether it's through an anonymizing browser or whether it's through different techniques to change the attributes of their location or their device um, or emulate a mobile device, as an example. Those are all things we look for. And then um, we can look for those explicitly through our rules-based platform. But then our machine learning system can also identify interesting patterns from fraud rings and other fraudsters um, that you may never have thought of. And screen resolution might be one of, you know, unusual screen resolutions might be a good example of that. But there's other things that, that um, our machine learning platform is analyzing those same hundreds of device attributes um, and understanding from the uh, from the characteristics of that user when they're coming. Um, is this somebody that is high risk? Uh, and that's that's some of the power of artificial intelligence is that it can really complement your risk-based systems. Uh, we always recommend that you look to add those things to work together. Um, they really work hand in hand um, and that you employ a defense in depth. And so, 
you know, we've talked a lot about uh, account openings and account creation with bonus abuse, uh, but also protecting player accounts is, a, is an important topic as well. And this is where the very best thing to do there is use strong authentication. And whether it's pairing and understanding good consumer devices with their account or using strong multi-factor authentication, um, these are all technologies that we feel are important to protect player accounts, fight fraud, and identify uh, uh, new users. And then finally, uh, one of the sort of big questions that's come in a couple of different ways. Uh, for operators strategizing their approach to bonus abuse, what would you say are sort of their key considerations? What are the, the top line things they need to think of, whether it's their, you know, approaching it internally, externally with third party solution providers like yourself? What are those sort of top line things they need to make sure they understand about themselves and their operations first? Well, I think that the first thing that they need to do is take a look at this from a very clear ROI perspective. They need to understand the relationship to deposit size, to their bottom line rep, you know, to their top line revenue, um, as well as what are their fraud rates, what is an acceptable fraud rate, and where do they want to get that. Uh, but then also tying it to some more marketing types of metrics, like what is their abandonment rate? Um, if you can streamline good customers quicker and you can affect that abandonment rate when players are creating new accounts uh, because you have less broad controls for people that you've identified as good, um, you know, that has a direct impact on your ROI as well. So it's really about setting a profile of their process for bringing on new customers and really understanding um, the, the impact of bonuses to their bottom line, uh, to their profitability. So we work with um, new new players, new I'm sorry, new operators to uh, profile that ROI, to understand how they're using bonuses, to identify opportunities for improvement, uh, to be more competitive in the market, while making sure that that fraud rate is going down, but also that the experience for good customers is improving at the exact same time so that they're onboarded quicker and that they have a less abandonment on those accounts. So it, it's really working hand in hand with those business objectives and then tuning uh, the fraud solutions to make sure that you have uh, what we call a friction right uh, approach, which is for people that are most likely to be good, you want as low a friction as possible for those people that identify um, or profile as risky then you want to have more controls in place to prevent that kind of fraud. And then as a sort of quick follow up to that before we close out today, would you say there is a, a figure or, or a particular level which you would say is a good fraud rate in iGaming or is it a case of just as low as possible? Uh, yeah, I don't generally talk to a specific target rate because for each business it's different based on what type of gaming operator it is. I mean, it's going to be different from sports books to casinos to poker. Um, so generally <laughs> it's about what is your current rate? What are the basis points that we can reduce uh, and get an improvement on that fraud rate? Um, as well as some of the good side of this as well as increasing the deposits, increasing follow through on account creation. So we, typically we work that client to client as opposed to, you know, what is a standard uh, rate? Fantastic. Well, like I say, that's all we have time for today. Uh, so thank you so much again to Scott for joining us and sharing your insights. It's been really interesting hearing more about uh, your guys' sort of position on this. So today's webinar has been recorded and is going to be available to listen to on demand shortly. And you can rewatch and share this with your colleagues. As Scott mentioned, February is going to be a really exciting month for content from iOvation, uh, not in the least because we've got another webinar lined up. I believe that one's going to be with Angie, your colleague, uh, who is fantastic as well. Otherwise, thank you all so much for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye now.